Hello and welcome to episode 71 of the Fish Tank. So uh, 71, to be honest, not really a very important number. I've had a look around, can't find anything. Although, I'm actually recording 95, 95 years to the day since uh, Emily Davidson gatecrashed the uh, Epsom Derby and threw herself under a horse to uh, sort of, and, and got herself killed under a horse to uh, campaign about feminism and uh, women having the right to vote and the suffragette movement, all that kind of thing. So I uh, thought I'd give that a mention instead. It's, uh, it, it, it's alleged that's how she died. Personally speaking, I thought she was just trying to get across the track to uh, drop some mining off for her husband. But uh, I don't know, I, I, I can't be certain. We'll have to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go with what history says. So it is interesting, her name's Emily Davidson and she died in the Epsom Derby. If she was called, you know, Grace Nielsen, would she have killed herself during the Grand National? Is it like an initials thing? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So uh, there you go. Anyway, it's time for apology of the week now. Anyway, um, this week's apology. I was I, well. I was I was going to apologise to footballers because, like, in the last couple of weeks, I've been a bit harsh on footballers, saying they're a bit stupid. Um, but then, in his post-match interview on uh, Sunday after the game against Trinidad and Tobago, Jermaine Defoe said this. You know, you can't complain. You know. To play for your country, like I've always said, you know, it's the best thing in the world, you know. When a new manager comes in, you know, everyone starts on, you know, the same level, you know. I've just got to work hard, you know. Alright, so, possibly, I was, I, was, I was actually sort of like talking a bit of sense when I said football perhaps weren't the brightest people in the world. I mean, he just says the word, you know, continuously. I mean, he's getting sponsored by some company that just makes a product called You Know, whatever that is. So I suppose it shouldn't be too harsh on the main defoe. He had just uh, finished uh, playing football against two teams because they played Trinidad and Tobago. So it must have been a bit tough. Probably twice as, twice as much hard work as a normal game against one team. So uh, what's been going on this week? Well, uh, Fern Britton has been in the news this week. Apparently she refused to admit that she'd had a gastric band put in. Uh, personally speaking, I always thought a gastric was what uh, what you called it when you lighted a fire or something like that. But uh, yeah, she had a gastric band put in, and everyone's had a right go at her for uh, not admitting it. You shouldn't have to tell everyone ev uh, everyone any uh, everything. You know, it's not not necessary. She's uh, allowed a bit of a private life just because she presented this morning in the um, in the morning, obviously. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's a bit harsh on her because people, one person said it's the biggest case of deception I've ever seen. I mean, I feel sorry for Fern Britain because, you know, if, if she's, like, looking a bit... I just said, you know. If she's uh, looking fat or whatever, she'll be put on the front cover of various magazines saying, oh, look at Fern Britain, there she is, she's fat. And then all of a sudden, she does something to lose weight, and then people start having a go at her as well. And say it's the worst case of deception ever. That's just ridiculous. I mean, I was going to talk about Joseph Fritzl, the uh, person who kept his Austrian daughter um, downstairs in his cellar for 23 years, but... Uh, there's no point because it's not a big enough case of deception to talk about. Obviously, firm Britain's more important than that. So, uh, what else has been going on anyway? Well, the army have been in the news, or the, or the government, more precisely, have been in the news talking about the army. They've said they want to get all army servicemen to go around wearing the uniforms to make sort of people get uh, given more respect and that sort of thing. Um, although, if Prince Harry's watching this, when it says wear your army uniform, British army, okay. Not the old Nazi uniform again. Don't get the wrong idea, mate. Uh, what, what, what have I been up to this week? Uh, exams. Exams. I've been up to exams. Quite busy with exams um, and revision and things like that. It's been quite hard. And But there you go. It's just, just part of being at university, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, not great when it comes to planning my revision and that kind of thing. I wanted to go on a time management course to help it, but uh, couldn't fit in the schedule, unfortunately. So just the way it is at times. So it's time for the celeb -ometer now. And I would like Barack Obama on the show. Could be good on the show, you know. Um, yeah, he's, he's apparently just today claimed the uh, Democrat uh, nomination for the uh, US presidential elections. I'm not sure quite how you can just claim nomination. I mean, I, I, might, I might go and do it myself, you know, just claim that I've been nominated. So apparently he's about to defeat Hillary Clinton. Probably will do in a couple of days' time. So by the time you watch it, basically, watch this uh, show. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to give him on the show, get him, get him to talk, get, talk about his pol uh, policies and all that kind of thing. Because um, I don't know, it's like Clinton versus Obama. It's sort of like Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield. Whoever wins that gets to take on, you know, Audley Harrison. 
seems a bit one-sided, but we'll have to wait and see what uh, happens in the full, in the actual election. I mean, uh, I know John McCain's been that busy with his campaigning for the Republican Party that apparently he's not had, he's not been able to do anything towards his frozen chip business. So that's just a word. I mean, also um, Clinton and Obama. You know, there's big arguments about who's more experienced and that kind of thing because neither of them's actually um, you know, been a president before or anything like that. But uh, yeah, Bill Clinton, Hillary's wife, uh, Hillary's husband rather, is quite obviously uh, obviously very experienced. You know, a well-known two-timer, you could say, in more than one sense of the word. So anyway, it's uh, time for headline of the week. Anyway, uh, which this week isn't actually a headline. It's a um, it's it's a warning sign on the side of a hammer that's been bought from B and Q, and it says, "Warning: Do not the, do not use this hammer to hit any solid objects." So uh, it's a great hammer, you know, just for you know, nailing pieces of water into the wall and liquid and that sort of stuff. I mean, what good? What? What are you going to do with a hammer? Of course, you're going to hit solid objects. That's what you hit nails with them. And nails are solid. I mean, a rubber nail's not going to be any good, is it? Oh, I don't know. Incredible. And uh, quote of the week this week comes from Dan Quayle, another uh, American politician who uh, served as George Bush Senior's uh, vice president between 1989 and 1993, I think it was. And he said, uh, I deserve praise for the things I didn't do. So, uh, good on you. I suppose uh, a bit opportunistic, but there you go. I mean, uh, personally speaking, I'd, I'd like a bit of praise for uh, managing the England football team to World Cup victory. But I didn't do it. So uh, feel free to give me, uh, give me praise, I suppose, uh, if I'm using Dan Quayle's laws. So uh, that's it. Anyway, that's uh, that's it for this week's episode of the Fish Tank. But uh, before I go, I've just uh, apparently a bomb has been found in a tree in Durham, and the uh, IRA claim to have planted it. So there you go. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>